We're looking at Thomas today in John chapter 11. Now, Thomas is a fun one because, again, it's just interesting to see what stories are chosen, why stories. There's so few on these, um, on these disciples. Other than being in a list, he is not in Matthew, Mark, or Luke. There's not a story about him other than just he's mentioned in the list. But in John, we have three. And all three of them are a little suspicious. All three of them have a similar feel to them. So John, John knows what he's doing. There's three different quotes that we're going to pull from, uh, from Thomas that I think would be interesting for us and maybe learn from. So I have it titled, uh, Tweets from Thomas. Now, that's a little dated because they're not called tweets anymore. Uh, they're called posts, and it's not Twitter, it's X, right? So when they change to X, they also immediately change. It's not, uh, they're not tweets, but I'm still doing that because it sounds cool. Um, 256 million users on X. That's a lot. Because they're like pithy. They're short. They're fun. They're kind of interesting little phrases. And so that's how we're looking at Thomas. If you have your, um, your notes there, you could take a look at the same. John chapter 11 is one of the three. There's three of them. Look briefly at all three of them. John chapter 11. Be nice if you could pull it up if you've got it available there. John chapter 11. The first one, first tweet would be, let us go along and die with him. John eleven sixteen. This was an odd thing to say. We're just going to call it what it is. Thomas is known as Doubting Thomas because of one of his three stories, but he also was as part of that, he just didn't think big. He was doubting. He was free to say it. I called him Courageous Thomas because he was at least brave enough to say out loud what everybody else was thinking. But get the mood of this. If you have your Bible in John 11, verse 1 Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha, it was Mary who anointed the Lord with ointment, wiped his feet. Brother Lazarus was ill. So the sisters sent to him saying, Lord, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, the illness did not, he said, this illness will not lead to death. It's for the glory of God so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Okay, he's not going to die. Now, Jesus loved Martha and her sister and, uh, and Lazarus. So when he heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place that he was. Then after this, he said to the disciples, let's go to Judea again. This is really key in understanding this tweet that's on the screen. It says, let's go to Judea again. The disciples said, oh, uh, not a good idea because the Jews they kind of want to stone you. And are you going to go there again? And they're not, it's 12 hours in a day? Like, are we really going to go over there? He was likely in a location called Bethany across the Jordan. So you have the Sea of Galilee, and you have the Jordan River, and then you have the Dead Sea. When this is where Jerusalem is, right over here, and Across the Jordan River was another Bethany, kind of wildernessy. It's where John the Baptist did all his stuff. It's in Jordan today. You can go there. You can see all of those areas that are very prevalent, Old Testament and even into the life of Jesus. But to go across the Jordan, so they're over here to cross over the Jordan and go back to just above Jerusalem, a little east. To Bethany? Not a good idea. Well, but Lazarus is sick. He needs you. 
And they're like, oh, don't, we barely got out of there alive. That's in John chapter 10. Remember, John 10 was that amazing. Thomas would have been there for this. They scrambled rocks. Literally, they were at that point, scrambling rocks. And Jesus goes, whoa, 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 whoa. I have done many wonderful things. For which of these do you stone me? They said, for none of them were stoning you because you, a mere man, claim to be God. So there are many today that believe that Jesus never really claimed to be God. He was just a good teacher. No, he was claiming to be God over and over and over. So much that he said, I and my Father are one. Not one in mission. We're the same. If you're not sure what he meant by that when he said that, they scrambled to stone him because he just said he's God. They barely got out of there. They're across the Jordan. They're in kind of wilderness They're safe over there. Well, let's go back. We're going back. And he says, verse 8, the disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just now seeking to stone you, and you're going to go there again? Are not there 12 hours in a day? If anyone walks in the day, he will stumble. He He does not stumble because he sees the light of the world. But if anyone walks in the night, he stumbles because the light Uh, is not in him. After saying these things, he said to them, our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I will go awaken him. The disciples said, Lord, if he's fallen asleep, he'll recover. They didn't know what he meant by that kind of fall asleep. Now, Jesus has spoken of his death, but they thought he meant he was taking a rest. Then Jesus said to them plainly, isn't that great? He goes, "Okay, okay, okay. Lazarus has died. (laughs) He had to say that. And for your sake, I'm glad that I was not there so that you may believe. But let us go to him. Okay? Here comes. So Thomas, called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, let us also go that we may die with him. Thomas, the twin. It's like Didymus. It's it's Greek. Thomas means twin. And in Greek, your translation may say Thomas, also called Didymus, which is twin. He was a twin. That's all we know. People have said, oh, I bet he's twin brother with Matthew, because he's once named with Matthew. In Acts, he's named with Philip, so they go, oh, I bet you that's his twin. Pure speculation. No one has any idea the likelihood, if we were gambling people, ah, I can't do that on Sunday, can we? Okay. Um, if we were going to guess, we'll guess he was probably a twin. <laughs> we just don't know the other one. That's probably what's going on, but that's how they designated. Oh, he's the twin. But what did he mean? Let us go that we may die with Lazarus. Who's him? Let us go that we may die with Jesus. Some think it was die with Lazarus. Doesn't make a lot of sense. That's why the bulk of people, okay, remember doubting Thomas. That's that's what he's unfortunately nicknamed. He's saying okay, Lazarus has died. Jesus says, we're going. We're going back into the heart of that Judea where they were trying to kill us. And the most amount of faith that Thomas could build up was, let us go. Let us go that we may die with Jesus. There's the line. Out of everybody. And he didn't really say to Jesus, did he? Verse 16, so Thomas, called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, come on, let's go. We're dying with him. Oh, maybe there is faith. I'm going to go die with him. I'm not letting him go over there and get stoned, except that I'm going to get stoned with him. 
I don't know, his mind was here. Human circumstance. He was afraid to He actually thought, if we all go over, we're going to die. I'm going to go die with him. No, if something happens to you, let's say somebody owes you money. That's always fun. Okay? Somebody owes you money. They voted for a while. There is no doubt that if Jesus wanted you to have that money back from them, you'd have it back today. And not hard. He would impress upon them, and you get your money back. Well, is he God or is he not God? None of this middle stuff. Your health, he could absolutely, completely heal you miraculously right now. Or your marriage. He could do that right now. I don't know, it's pretty down the road. Oh, yeah, I bet you Jesus is like, oh, this one's a tough one. Right? It's not a tough one. Broaden it. Is he God or is he not? Because just the chapter earlier, Thomas heard him say, I and the Father are the same. There was no misunderstanding whatsoever what that meant. Because the crowd instantaneously grabbed stones to stone him for blasphemy because you, a mere man, claim to be God. Thomas saw it. So Thomas, through these three tweets, you watch him. He is trying to get his mind around, who is this? That's the doubting part. He struggled with understanding the significance of who Jesus is, and so do we. Why, when we lose the job, are we in this panic that the world has just ended? Is he God or is he not God? Is he in control or is he not in control? Can we trust him or can we not trust him? That's why that great saying, it was by uh, Dr. Laura Schlesinger. You ever guys listen to her on the radio? The call-in counselor lady? When she said, crisis doesn't develop your, your character. Crisis reveals your character. Oh, I believe Jesus is God. I trust him for my salvation. That's fantastic. We trust him for our souls for all eternity. And we have trust, trouble trusting him for our car or relationship or our finance or a job or health. What kind of a disconnect is that? Oh, but he's my savior. Mm. For eternity. Yep. Heaven forever. Yep. Then why the do you trust him for what's happening today? That's the disconnect. How do we get what we believe in our heart to be true? He is God. He does love you. He has no pain in store for you except that which is for your good only. We know that in our mind. But to actually live it, to actually go so far as to say, I'm going to live that today. No, I don't like it. I don't want to go to that doctor again. I don't want to go through that experiment again because that's what it felt like. They don't know what they're doing. That's why it's medical practice, right? They're practicing. They're going to practice on me again. I get it. I don't like it either. But there's a point in which we say I'm very uncomfortable. I don't like what I'm experiencing. I don't see an end. I see it all as bad. But he's amazing. I trust him with my eternity and I trust him with my afternoon, and my car, and my relationships, and my family. That's that old phrase, he's Lord of all or he's not Lord at all. You can't just pick the big ones. Thomas struggled with that. Here's the other one, John 14, a couple pages later. Again, amazing that we would have these by Thomas why John decided to do that. Uh, 
John 14, 1, famous passage, you know it. Notice all of the Jesus uses, I, me. Jesus speaking to his disciples, he just got through saying, I'm leaving. Three years of good living, kicked out of some pretty great towns. Jesus says, I'm leaving. He says, let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. For in my Father's house there are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again, take you to myself, that where I am, there may you be also. Thomas said, oh no, Thomas, don't. He said what we all wanted to hear. Thomas said, we don't know where you're going, and we don't know how to get there. And Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Nobody comes to the Father except through me. We all know the verse, right? I'm the way, the truth, and the life. If Thomas hadn't asked that question, we wouldn't have it. I'm so great. That's why I don't want to call him Doubting Thomas. It's so negative. He was courageous to say out loud, they're all hurt, because he says, I'm leaving. I'm going to leave. I'm going to prepare a place. I'm coming back. And Thomas, we don't know where you're going, and we don't know how to get there. And he said it to his face. You're looking for the way. It's me. Truth, I am truth. You want life? It's me. There is no way to get to the Father except through Jesus Christ. I'm not claiming that as the Baptist church or the Baptist way. I'm not claiming that no church should claim that as the authority that they are the way because they represent Jesus. No, it's Jesus. It really is Him. He is the way, the truth, and the life. Thomas is hearing this, but he's having this disconnect. I just, I'm having trouble getting to it. How do I get to it? Where I really do believe this. Just look at our days. If he's the way, the truth, and the life, wouldn't we consult him more maybe than we do? How do we live a day? How does a believer that Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life, how does that believer wake up and not on a regular basis open the Word and soak in relationship with Him? How, how does that happen? There's a disconnect. I'm not saying they're not a believer. Well, they're not acting like a believer. That's true. What, I'm, I have these pithy sayings, maybe because we're thinking tweets, that the distance is only from head to heart. That's the distance. In our mind, we know Jesus' way, truth, and the life. We know it in our mind. But our heart, our actual actions, do they represent that? Thomas wasn't there. You really had to ask him, how do we get there? And where are you going? Are you serious? You've been with him for three years and you really had to ask that? He's processing it. He's thinking it through. And I think one of the greatest lines in John 11, let's see, the last, let's go to the last one. We'll finish with this last one. This is the famous one. John 20, 28. We're going to see Jesus' response. John 20, 24. This is the third tweet. Now, Thomas, one of the twelve, called the twin, was not with them when Jesus came, so the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. But he said, unless I see in his hands and mark of the nails and place my finger in the mark 
of the nails and place my hand into his side, I will never believe. That's where Doubting Thomas comes in. That's bold. They just saw him. He wasn't there. And he goes on record. (laughs) This is unbelievable. He goes on record to say, not if I don't see him, I want to put my fingers in his scars, those wounds, and unless I do, I'm not going to believe. Eight days later, his disciples were inside again, verse 26, and Thomas was with them. Yeah, I love that. You may have not forgotten. Thomas, the one who just said that, okay, we're back to him. He's with them. Although the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace be with you. And then he said to Thomas, I love this. Jesus wasn't in the room when he said it. Hey, peace be with you. Thomas, like, I know what you want right now. Put your finger here and see my hands and put out your hand and place it in my side. Do not disbelieve, but believe. Thomas answered, my Lord and my God. He made it. This is what I want to leave us with this thought. What struck me was the kindness and the grace of Jesus again. Put your finger here and see in my hands and put your hand, place it in my side. Do not disbelieve, but believe. He wasn't offended. It wasn't, come on, come on, feel it. Told you. Now you in with everybody else? Are you okay now? It wasn't that. It was uh, Thomas. Please put your fingers in my wounds. Don't disbelieve. Believe. There's the heart. Jesus wants you to believe that he is Lord and God. You're doing something, you're saying something, you're engaged in some activity that is against him. Please don't pick up this. Like, oh, really? You're doing that again? Please don't picture that. He loves you, and he's like, come on. I just want you to believe. I want to be on the same page with you. I love you. You can trust me. I can take care of things. The weight is heavy on you, and it shouldn't be. I'll take the weight. Nothing is going to touch you except that I have allowed it for your good and to the glory of God. Do you believe that? We're going to act like a a Pentecostal church. You can even run an aisle right now if you want. I want to hear an amen. Do you actually believe that nothing can touch you except that which is for your good and to the glory of God. Amen? Uh, It is true. But we've got to go from our mind to actually live it. We've got to go there. And you know how you do that? More time with him. Don't don't, just come to me. You can listen to me. Eh, Grain of salt. Him. Listen to him. Wake up and go, okay, I got another day ahead of me. Maybe it's an easy day. Maybe it's a horrible day planned. I don't know. We open the word and say, I'm here as an expression of trust. I believe you. You are my God. And he goes, yeah, I'm just glad you're here. Tell me, encourage me, correct me, guide me. Whatever you want to do with me today, let's go. And as we spend time with him, he is patient and loving because he wants you to believe. Isn't that beautiful? And if not for those three tweets of Thomas, his boldness, that's why it's courageous, Thomas. It's not maybe doubting Thomas. He did us a favor. Your finances, it's okay. It's okay. Trust him. Those relationships, that job, you can trust him because he really is our Lord and our God. 
and we can trust him. Pray with me. Heavenly Father, thank you. Thank you for these great phrases of Thomas. I ask that your Holy Spirit would bring us into even more belief in you. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.